I think that is the question we need to address today. Since the Netherlands was the first country 12 years ago to redefine marriage, what have we found on the other side of the fence? Many churches in the Netherlands no longer perform any marriage ceremonies. In 2005 in Sweden, a preacher, Aki Green, was preaching from the Bible in his own church about homosexuality. He was arrested for hate speech and spent 30 days in jail. In 2008, the website eHarmony was sued for refusing to match same-sex couples on their dating website. In May of 2010, Dale McAlpine, a preacher in the UK, was charged with causing harassment, alarm, and distress after a homosexual police community support officer overheard him reciting a number of sins referred to in the Bible, including blasphemy, drunkenness, and same-sex relationships. He spent seven hours in jail. July 2012, Mayor Rahm Emanuel makes his now famous quote that Chick-fil-A values are not Chicago values and vowed to block efforts to allow the business to locate in the city. A judge ruled last Wednesday that a Miami girl is allowed to grow up with three legal parents. A married lesbian couple and a gay man who donated sperm now share the birth certificate of their 23-month-old daughter. The gay man's lawyer said, we're creating entirely new concepts of families. If you have two women seeking to be listed as parent one and parent two, that does not exclude listing a man as father. The lawyer for the donor said that now that the state recognizes her client as the baby's father, he is allowed to visit her twice a week. Overnight visits will be discussed after she turns four. And these next few paragraphs uh, are attributed to Congressman Randy Forbes. Catholic adoption agencies have been forced to close their doors in Illinois, Massachusetts, and Washington, D.C because their religious beliefs about marriage were deemed unacceptable by their jurisdictions. A graduate student in Michigan was expelled from a counseling program because her religious beliefs about marriage were deemed unacceptable by school officials. Pastor Louis Giglio did not deliver the closing prayer at President Obama's inauguration ceremony because his religious beliefs about marriage were deemed unacceptable by the administration. In January, our nation celebrated Religious Freedom Day commemorating the anniversary of the passage of the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, in which Thomas Jefferson wrote, being enacted by the General Assembly that no man shall otherwise suffer on account of his religious opinions or belief, but that all men shall be free to profess and by argument to maintain their opinion in matters of religion. 200 years later, this important concept of religious freedom has been distorted into a tool used to sanitize school classrooms, war memorials, and courtrooms of references to faith. Its misapplication has led the public to believe that Jefferson's intent was to confine religion to the four walls of church. Context reveals, however, that Jefferson's wall of separation actually was meant to constrain the government, ensuring religious freedoms are treated as inalienable rights rather than favors granted. The Religious Freedom and Marriage Act is saying we will allow churches freedom or favors granted from performing same-sex marriages, an inalienable right they already possess and cannot be taken away by law. Before the civil unions legislation passed, supporters said it wasn't the precursor to, some, to same-sex marriage and that was not their agenda, but here we are. We are knocking down one of the central foundations of society with this bill. We are creating a new class of citizens, elevating their rights over those of others. And finally, we must look at the moral fence that has been established. Recently, 260 ministers, pastors, and rabbis in a press release stated that same-sex marriage is the moral thing to do. According to whom? Who is the author of morality? Is it the General Assembly? The group of ministers? Who decides what is right and wrong? There are, in fact, moral absolutes. They are found in the best-selling book of all time to which the governor himself referenced last week in his State of the State Address when he referred to principles as old as the Bible and quoted the prophet Jeremiah. From Old Testament to New, there is nothing that supports same-sex marriage, just the opposite is true. Since the governor is fond of quoting scripture, I thought it appropriate to conclude with a couple of quotes. The prophet Elijah said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. Joshua said, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you shall serve, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And finally, the words of Jesus Christ, if you love me, keep my commands.
before we knock down a fence, we better ask the question why it was put there in the first place. Thank you, Mr. President.